Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I wanted to go ahead and talk to you guys about the patch notes for the Synthesis League. Now I didn't want to just clip my stream and upload it to YouTube because that would take like two hours. So basically I'm just going to scroll through and kind of point out and summarize some of the things that I really enjoyed. Now remember that this is my opinion, so I'm not really going to be telling you everything. I'm just going to be telling you what really stands out to me personally. So, um... Let's first off go ahead and start with, there was one really nice, I think it's actually, is it character balance? Here we go. So one huge thing that I noticed a lot of people did not realize, and it's actually one of the biggest things to happen in Path of Exile, is improved many cases of damage mitigation being applied before an incoming hit was registered, which would cause a character that would otherwise take reduced damage or no damage at all to take more damage than expected. In other words, when a monster attacks and use Immortal Call after an attack is used, but before it lands, you will now correctly mitigate this damage. So let me explain why this is such an important change. So let's give two scenarios. So scenario one, uh, you're running courtyard, you know, tiered 13 map, whatever, and you've got three damage mods on it, and there's a Roa standing next to a sub-fizz totem. That means that the Roa has substantial physical damage, which is going to basically multiply all the elemental damage it's about to hit you with. So that Roa charges you. Now, that Roa charges you, right? And as it's charging, you decide to hit your Wise Oak, your Topaz, your Basalt Flask, and then it become it comes in range of your blasphemy and feeble it doesn't matter previously the damage was snapshotted at the charge now they have improved the way it works how it says here being applied before an incoming hit meaning once that roa comes into proximity of the enfeeble or in general like what it basically rechecks it right before you get hit you know, I don't know the exact exactly how it works, but essentially damage mitigation is properly being applied. Another instance um, where this happens is say you take a portal out and then you zone back in, but you have a golem. And whereas you're invulnerable and your golem is smacking stuff, because it's smacking things, the boss, for example, may target the golem. So the boss targets the golem, shoots an AoE, and you're playing a curse build. All of a sudden, your curses get applied to the boss, but the boss already registered their attack. Now, I mean, even though curses are not very good against bosses, it will still, for example, reduce the damage of the skill, assuming that it's still in motion before it hits you. Another example would be like... Uh, devour projectile you know the gigantic ball that would be mitigated so this is an overall very very smooth change so i'm very happy for things like this um so tldr flame totem is completely reworked flame totem now has uh it's holy flame totem um it's considered channeling which is really interesting and you gain curse immunity while on the consecrated ground from the flame totem storm burst is not uh, storm burst is completely reworked as well does not fire projectiles anymore um big skill balance so one thing to note just to scroll down here summoners did not really get any love except for mana cost reduction anger has been rescaled the biggest thing on arc that was changed is the arc chaining arctic breath had big damage increase armageddon brand got giga nerfed for some reason uh, assassin's mark now has a buff to it they change critical strike chance so minimum values were before five percent and maximum values were 95 now maximum value is a hundred and minimum value is zero and they changed some things in there but that's pretty much what you need to know assassin's mark now scales with increased critical strike chance um pretty much every skill that you didn't really see used got buffed along like the border like they all got buffed in some type of way um blade vortex was nerfed a lot of the meta skills were nerfed blight was buffed uh spreading rock from blight no longer amplifies damage to compensate they buffed all chaos damage skills for the most part including uh but not limited to death's oath um just to scroll down cleave along with ground slam and a lot of the retaliate skills have had their targets increase from 20 to 40 um the cold snap meta is still very strong with damage over time cremation received very large buffs uh blight received a radius buff which is very nice uh scrolling down 
A lot of skills have been redone, not redone necessarily, but they have lowered their cast time to make self-casting feel a lot better. This is, this is a, <clears throat> excuse me, this is an indirect nerf to traps and mines because of the lowered cast time, but basically similar damage, since traps would want like a slow hit that hits really hard because it bypasses cast time. But traps are still totally fine because trap skills themselves have gotten buffed significantly. Essence Drain now has a tiny bit of AoE on impact, um, which makes it really nice, so you probably don't have to use things like Pierce or Multiproj on it anymore, uh, or like try to craft a plus one Quiver, uh, or I think Bow? Quiver? Bow? Forgot which one it is. Scrolling down, scrolling down, Fireball received big boy uh, buffs, Firestorm should feel very nice for self-cast. Frostbolt received a huge buff, as well as Freezing Pulse. Hatred has been changed and now grants conversion, no sorry, not conversion, grants more cold damage so it works for spells that aren't physical, along with still giving the extra cold damage. Ice Trap received huge buffs along with a radius increase, so not just AoE, but actual radius increase. And pretty much gonna just scroll. Shock Novus received really big buffs. Do, 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 do. Unearth now has an AoE tag, if I remember correctly here. Yep. Winter Orb is still very good. Um, Vol skills, nothing really too much. Most of them, it's just saying that they're they're being balanced along with their skills. So if, for example, Flame Blast was buffed, which it was, Vol Flame Blast now is buffed. Um, so there's Storm Barrier, which was the old support gem, has been completely reworked, and it's really cool now. Um, instead of it basically being shit, it now gives you a multiplier to damage. Actually, I think I can show you it right here. This is the new Storm Barrier. It's called Infused Channeling. It gives you 39% more damage, along with reducing physical damage from hits. Grants you more damage of types matching supported skill gems tags. I don't know what that means exactly. I do understand what this, the last line is, which is take 8% less from hits uh, of types matching the skill gem tag. So for example, if you're using Scorching Ray, that would be fire, right? So you also take 8% less from fire, I would believe. Uh, Arcane Surge now gives you a multiplier if you're using it as an active link. Uh, Chain has received crazy buffs, should be very good for leveling now. Decay was buffed, so leveling with Decay is going to be much better. Fork got the same thing as Chain, they're very strong. Innervate has been buffed, the duration has been doubled on it. Uh, Life Leech is a meme, Mana Leech is a meme, Onslaught is okay. They should have buffed this more in my opinion, like 20% chance for 5 seconds. Spell Cascade is pretty nice. Um, what else is on here? And Summon Phantasm should be really nice as well, because it allows you to net Phantasms while actually um, attacking a target. Now, there was a number of changes to the passive tree, uh, to just bring up the passive tree really fast to show you guys some examples. There are now new nodes on the tree, specifically for channeling. You can find these uh, basically on this top side. So you can see there's a channeling cluster here, and there's a channeling cluster here. I think there may even be another channeling cluster somewhere else. Uh, there's also new pathing in Shadow. Shadow now gives flat energy shield and flat life, which is very, very strong for it. There's also this new notable here, which gives projectile speed and AoE and global damage increase. Some other big changes to the tree is they have also added a large amount of energy leech you can find that for example here along with on every single one of these elements leeches to your associated energy shield based on, or energy shield based off the element and another big cluster at light eater they also have added in a lot more energy shield nodes sorry energy sorry shield energy shield shield nodes Shield node, ES shield nodes, there we go. ES shield nodes are now a lot more abundant on the tree, um, which is also very nice because they, they're like really strong actually. Not only do they give you block slash spell block, but they also either have like spell damage while holding a shield or cast speed on it. And this one specifically is 
uh, 40% ES and an additional 60% ES from your shield, which is very, very big. And then there's another cluster over here on this side, which if you were to look, for example, 5% increased cast speed while holding a shield, 5% spell damage per 5% chance to block attack damage, 20% chance to avoid elemental ailments, which is just nice, and then just flat out 20% chance to avoid being stunned. I don't really care much about that, but 3% chance to block attack damage while holding a shield. So really nice. You also don't technically have to get Ghost Reaver now because Energy Shield Leech is an actual stat, so you don't have to get Life Leech and convert it over, which I thought was really, really interesting. Um, Trickster has been reworked. Uh, Trickster now has real sources of mitigation. So it's also favoring you to even furthermore play Energy Shield Evasion. Uh, Inquisitor's Consecrated Ground has been buffed significantly and changed. Slayer has been completely nerfed to the ground from what I understand because of them ner They basically nerfed Leech in like overall. Um, Leech. Leech basically now, to simply put it, you need to have a large hit or a decently large hit and you need to attack very quickly because there's a cap on how much your big hits can leech and it's very small. So don't expect to have like giga amounts of leech anymore in terms of like uh, over leech. There we go. Um, item balance, two stones and bone helmets can now be enchanted while keeping their implicit, but it has been lowered. Um, and then the unique item balance, really the only thing I wanna cover here is pretty much Death's Oath. Death's Oath now deals 25% more damage per second. And I mean, there's a couple other changes on there in general, but that's pretty much what I wanted to cover. I do believe for curse builds now, bosses have even, I, I don't know exactly how it is. They rework the way a lot of curses work on bosses. So if I pull up like Enfeeble, Enfeeble now, for example, now causes normal and magic enemies to deal 21% less. Um, and rare and uniques deal 10% less. So that's been nerfed, but I do believe because they also nerfed boss resistance of curses, then your damage curses are more effective. So things like despair, alley weakness, uh, etc. Oh yeah, EK. EK has hit very, very bu uh, big buffs as well. Damage effectiveness went up and the top end went up by a shit ton. So EK meta is gonna be here as well. So that's pretty much gonna cover um, most of it from the patch notes. Uh, remember that there are a shit ton of new skill gems that are out here. So for example, there's the infused channeling, there's the energy shield leech support gem, there's the unleash support gem, there's the intensify support gem. So lots of really fun stuff for self-casting. Um, I think the overall goal of these support gems is to make builds feel a lot more clean. So when you're clearing, so you don't have that weird inconsistency, it seems they really wanna push most builds into like the one shot meta where you can like effectively hit a pack one time and just explode it or you know clear it because when you're comparing it to other skills, it feels really bad. So I think that's the purpose of this. Um, and then, yeah, pretty much the last thing I wanna tell you guys about is some league starters I'll be posting hopefully tomorrow. Um, now, of course, these league starters are not gonna have full sets of gear. I don't know how everyone else does their their league starters for you, but basically the way my league starters are gonna work is uh, ignore ignore all this. It's basically gonna have a skill tree drop down so you can see how I would personally path while leveling. And then of course the video will explain the reasons why I choose certain things. And then depending on the build I play, uh, which is probably going to be the Divine Ire character slash Stormburst Trickster. That character itself will receive, uh, well, well, you'll see content updates daily on that character. The other characters are just basically for a league start. It's an extra idea. I can't really give you guys much information on them until I play them. So you'll pretty much just have a skill tree um, along with just basic stuff, you know, like pointers and how to play the character. Um, and I mean, there's so many builds that I could recommend. I can't make a build guide for every single one of them. But like, Shockwave Totem Chieftain is really strong right now. The AoE just lacks a little bit. Um, Death's Oath is going to be really strong as well. Whether you play it life with Diadem um, or hybrid with Diadem and or ES based. Uh, Essence Strain is going to be really strong. But I, pretty much every single fucking skill is going to be like decent at league starting now for the most part. 
Um, and then the new soul, 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 I don't know what it's called. The homing cask build is going to be really cool as well. But anyway, that's pretty much going to be about it for now. So I hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Remember, if you're curious, I'll be working more on these tomorrow. So feel free to stop by the stream at twitch.tv slash pox and check it out. But that's it for now. So I'll catch you guys all later. Hope to see you guys in Synthesis League. I can't wait to find some yummy fractured items.